This is a design for a simple suburban house, perfectly suitable for a starter house. Both houses are exactly the same, they're just built as mirror images of each other. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this house and we're also going to do a basic interior. To make the suburban house you'll need the following. I know it looks like a lot of blocks. These are the blocks for the main palette but you can of course mix and match any blocks that you want. So let's get started. This is the footprint for the house. It's basically 14 by 17 at its furthest points. So not a huge house by any means. We're going to start with the foundations of the house. I'm using a mix of smooth sandstone and bricks because I happen to like that. So if I talk about smooth sandstone or cut sandstone or brick and you're using a different block, just use the same block counts but substitute your materials. We're going to start at the front, at the front left corner. I'm going to begin with my cut sandstone block and we're going to place two blocks, leave a gap for the door, place another block, polished granite stair and two more blocks. Come round to the side, I'm going to place another cut sandstone block, a polished granite stair, the stairs are marking our windows by the way, and now nine cut sandstone blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. Another polished granite stair for a window and four more cut sandstone blocks. Come around to the back and if this is one we're going to three cut sandstone blocks, two polished granite stairs, one block, a gap for a door and two more blocks, two more polished granite stairs and one, two, three cut sandstone blocks come round to the other side of the house. This is one, two, three and four polished granite stairs and ten cut sandstone blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Come round to the front again. We're coming to the inside. This area here is the garage. So this is one, two, three, four and five. Leave a gap for a door and place four more and then turn 90 degrees and place six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Come back to the front and on this inside wall again we're going to count across one, two and a block in front of the third. And that's the foundation of the house. At each corner we make a little column three blocks high. So it's accent block, main building block, accent block. For me that's brick, smooth sandstone, brick. So just do that at every corner and do it at the front of the garage here and on this little block that's protruding. Come to where the back wall of the garage intersects the side wall of the house and do one more column of three. There we go, that gives us our height for the ground floor. Now as I've said each of these polished granite stairs represents a window. The gaps represent doors. We're now going to go around and fill in all the walls leaving the window spaces and the door spaces. So I'm just using smooth sandstone here and just building up my walls to the finished height of four blocks. And that's four blocks counting our foundation row. Now when you come to the side wall of the garage we're going to build up a row of two and then two blocks, leave a gap of two, two blocks and fill the space in between with two trap doors and fold them up. That gives us a little side window for our garage. And now just build up the remaining garage walls to the full height of four blocks. Now come around to the front again and in this door gap an upside down polished granite stair right at the top. Now we're going to go around and fill in all the window gaps with upside down polished granite stairs. At the back door place smooth sandstone at the top of the gap and an upside down polished granite stair underneath it. And if we come to the door through to the garage just place 
two smooth sandstone at the top. Now we start digging out the floors. Dig out the garage floor and take it forward a bit so that you have a drive going into the garage. And now fill that drive with whatever you want. You can use gravel, blackstone, concrete, whatever you like. I'm using andesite. And now it's time to make the garage door. So grab dark oak, come to your first row here of the garage, and we're going to place one, two, three, four, and five dark oak trapdoors. On top of those, we're going to place another one. And then on top of those, an oak trapdoor, and finish it off with a row of dark oak trapdoors. And now fold all of those up, and there's your garage door. Now we're going to dig out the entranceway and put a floor in there. Start by taking out a block in your doorway and maybe take out a little path. Put in whatever path blocks you want for that and add a block for your front doorway. I've got polished andesite. Now dig out a floor. We're going to go back six blocks. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Take out the door for your garage and take out the rest of this front foyer. Fill it in with the block of your choice. I'm using oak slabs. Now with the doorway to the garage, you can either fill it in with oak or you can fill it in to match your garage floor. Come around to this little side room here and we're going to go along one, two, three, four and five and we're going to take out the whole floor for this section. Now fill in this floor with oak slabs as well. This is going to be our little lounge room, which will also double as an enchanting room. The rest of this area is our kitchen and dining room. So dig out the rest of the floor. Now that that's dug out, fill in the kitchen dining room floor with blocks of your choice. I'm going to make a nice checkerboard pattern using polished diorite and polished andesite for no other reason than I like it and it's a reasonable floor at an early stage of the game. Now again, knock out the block at the back door and replace it with block of your choice. And now go around and fill in all the windows with clear glass panes. Now that we've got our floors and windows in, it's time to add doors. I like using dark oak for the front door and any internal doors. And a plain oak door for the kitchen door. At the front door here, come outside and a Above the dark oak door, place a birch trap door for a fan light. I'm going to make stairs up to the first floor and then we're going to put in dividing walls for the bottom floor. So in this front foyer, come to the right hand side and leave a gap of two blocks from the front right corner and dark oak stairs, one, two, three and four. That should bring us level with the back of the foyer floor. Now we're going to make room dividers out of trap doors. So come round to the kitchen facing into the foyer and place two dark oak trap doors, two on top and two birch trap doors on top of those. Leave a gap of one for a door and do the same thing again. Fold them up to make your dividing wall. Now come into the foyer and we're going to place a dark oak door in the space and we want the hinges on the stair side. Come back into the kitchen dining room side and a birch trap door on top of that. Now we come round to the wall between the kitchen and the lounge room. From the garage wall we're going to count across, we're going to leave a gap of three, one, two, three. Then it's two dark oak trap doors and a birch trap door on top of it, a gap of one, and do the same thing. Now come into your lounge room area. We're going to put down a dark oak door. We want the hinge on the front side so that the door opens like that. Come round to the front of the door and place a birch trap door on top. Now grab oak stairs and we're going to place five above our birch trap doors. Coming to the wall into the lounge room, we're going to place another six above the birch trap doors. 
we're going to come into the foyer. We're going to make a cupboard under the stairs. So facing the stairs, we're going to place one, two, three dark oak trap doors. We're going to build those up to a height of three. Fold them all up. Now we're going to grab oak stairs again and we're going to place one upside down next to the dark oak stairs and we're going to place another four next to that. So one, two, three and four. Now facing the front of the house, place an upside down oak stair behind your granite stair. It's actually really important that you turn it 90 degrees. If you do it this way, you'll end up mitering your window stair. You don't want to do that. And now we're going to line the rest of this room right around the top with upside down oak stairs. Now come to the inside of your understairs cupboard. Place a dark oak door with the hinges against the common wall with your dining room and a dark oak trap door on top. Now fill in the rest of your foyer ceiling with oak slabs and fill in the two above the blocks in front of the stairs. Do the same with the kitchen dining room ceiling. If you come into the lounge room, fill in the entire ceiling with oak slabs. Now that that's done, let's go and work on the next floor up. Let's start by finishing off the garage. It's very simple. We're just going to put three of our main building blocks, for me that's smooth sandstone, on top of the middle three dark oak trapdoors of the garage door. So one, two and three. Now at each corner we're going to build up another column. This time it's going to be five blocks high. And we do that on every corner right the way around. If you're playing on survival and you don't want to get hurt jumping down five blocks, pop a couple of main blocks at the side and then build up the rest of your tower. That means the most that you'll have to fall down is three blocks, which shouldn't hurt. This block here is now a corner because you're finished with the garage, so don't build up these two at the garage front. There we are, that's the height of our next floor. Now go right the way round with your main building block. Now it's time to mark in the windows. Come around to the front of the house and we're going to place in windows above the door and the window of the lower floor. So on this first row next to our column, we're going to place three blocks, leave a gap of one and place three more, another gap of one and three more and fill in the row at the top. Come around to the side of the house. We're going to go across three blocks, so one, two, three. We're going to build that up to a height of three. Come down to the other end of this side and do three blocks to a height of three. And then leaving a gap at each end, fill in the rest of the wall. That should be seven blocks in between. And of course, complete the row right the way along the top. At the back of the house, next to the column, we're going to place two columns of three, leave a gap of one, and fill in five more, so one, two, three, four, five. Build that up to a height of three, leave a gap of two, and build the next two up to a height of three. And cap off the whole thing with a full row. Now come round to the last side, we're going to go along one, two, three, leave a gap of one, and then build up two more, and right the way along the top. And now the remaining two walls, we're going to build up to the full height. Now come back to the front wall and put another row on top, leaving a gap at each end. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And place one, two, three and one at the top. Come to the narrower of the remaining side walls and we're going to leave a gap at each end. Then one, two, three and four and one, two. Come round to the long side and from the back wall we're going to leave a gap of one and place one, two, three, four, five and six. Then we're going to come back one, two, three and four come back again and one, two. So we end up with three gable ends. 
Now in each of the windows at the top of the window frames place an upside down polished granite stair. Now if we stand at the front of the house and we look at the two in this back right hand corner, we're going to fill those two with white stained glass because that's where the bathroom's going and we're going to fill all the rest with clear panes of glass. Now it's time to put in the internal walls again. Lining the stairs we're going to place one, two, three and four dark oak trap doors. I'm going to place another one on top and two rows of birch trap doors on top of that. Fold them all up. Now place a waste block at the end of the stairwell here and coming off that going into the stairwell space a dark oak trap door and we're going to place another one on top and two birch trap doors on top of that. Get rid of your waste block and fold them all up. Come round and facing towards the front of the house, I'm going to place two dark oak trap doors, a gap and a dark oak trap door. And we're going to build up another row of the dark oak trap doors and two rows of birch trap doors on top of all of those. Now come inside the room, place a dark oak door so that the hinge is closest to the wall. And now coming out into what is going to be the hallway, on top of that place two birch trap doors and fold them up. Now grab your main building block. Now from the top of the stairs I'm going to count across one, two, three and four. And then I'm going to come back from this block and put an internal wall. That's one, two and three. And then I'm going to join this one up with this wall at the back of the house and build all that up to a height of four. And in this gap, which is the door gap, put one block. I'll put a fan light above the door and a door in the door frame with the hinge against the side wall. Now in this gap here, I'm placing a door again with the hinge against the wall. Come inside and place two birch trap doors on top of the door. That's all our internal walls done. And now we're going to place the ceiling in of this floor. It's birch slabs bottom half. And I'm running them right the way along the top of our internal walls. The last thing you want is spiders spawning in your ceiling. Now it's time for the roof. I'm using slate tile because slate is, once you start mining, slate is actually really easy to get hold of. So we're going to start with the garage. I'm going to run slate tile slabs top half along this side wall. Stick it out one more at the end, put one next to it and then one on top and run another row along the top of the side wall. I'm going to run two next to that, one step up and then two on top and continue at this top height right the way along to the back of the wall. Another one here, one on top, and right the way back again. Two on top, two on top of that, and right the way back. And now we're going to come down. So two on top of the wall, one underneath, and right the way back. Two next to that, two in front, or alternatively just use whole blocks. And right the way back with slabs and one on top, two in front, and you will have to use slabs for that, and right the way back again. Now some of those slabs are top half, they will be spawnable, so you have to work out how to spawn proof them, either by putting torches on them, or using some form of pressure plate. You could use a wood pressure plate, or if you've been to the nether, maybe polished blackstone. Right now for the rest of the roof. We're gonna start at the back. So run slate tile stairs right way up, right the way along the top of the back wall. Extend it out one either side. Upside down stair behind and stairs right the way along again. And keep repeating that till you get to the top of the roof. Now we're going to go to the side. We're going to do the garage side first. So 
starting at the front of the house, deep slate tile stairs right the way along this side wall and then right the way along this wall, extended out one at the back and upside down stair. And now run those stairs right the way around again, all the way around to the front and just keep repeating that until you get to the top of the front roof. Right now come around to this back roof and we are just going to finish off this top row. So upside down stair at the end and then right way upstairs right the way along. Don't forget to put an upside down stair underneath and then a stair at the end. Now the easiest way to get this next part right is to just finish this little gable end here before we begin this part. So we're going to put a right way up stair at the bottom so facing towards the gable end like that and now we're going to run a row right the way along the top of this wall but at 90 degrees to this stair here. When you get to the end extend it by one upside down stair. Now we're going to bring another row right the way along until we join up with the stairs we already have in. Come back to the front upside down stair and right the way along again. We're going to take it back two more this time so again we join up with this wall. Come back to the front upside down stair and we're going to run stairs right the way along yet again. When we get to the end here we're going to come across one more turn 90 degrees and put one last one in. Now come back to the front of the house an upside down stair in this gap and a deep slate tile slab bottom half right the way along to fill the gap. Now we've got a couple last things to do so come to the front of the house and either side of the front door place three walls, put a deep slate tile stair on top of each of those facing in like that then a top half slab in between and a bottom half slab on top just to make a little porch area. Come around the back of the house and above the back door place one, two, three spruce trap doors and hang a lantern from one of them but so that it's not in front of the back door itself. Now one last thing you can do to finish off the outside of your house is go around and knock out random blocks and pop in a toning block or a blending block to add a bit of texture. I'm using plain sandstone here. Don't place too much in, don't go too crazy but a bit here and there and try to avoid any patterns in your texturing. So there's the outside of our suburban house completely done and all the internal walls in place. You can stop the video here now and decorate it how you want but I'm going to show you a possibility for decorating the inside. So we're going to start with the main foyer. Come inside, stand with your back to the door, move across to the left and I'm going to place two looms. So I'm going to leave a gap of two and place one and I'm going to turn around and place another. So that this looks a bit like a chest of drawers. Then I'm going to place a spruce trap door and fold it up and another one and I'm going to place a lantern on top of one of those. Now come into the understairs cupboard and place one, two chests and hang a lantern from the stair directly above your head next to the door. Lastly place a couple of waste blocks and we're going to put in a painting and just keep going till you get the right one. I've put those in so that I get a painting that is two blocks long by one high. Okay, we're going to go do the enchanting room next, the lounge room. I'm going to place scaffolding in each corner here and put a lantern on each. And now I'm placing two stairs. I've got crimson stair just because I like how they look, but you can use whatever stairs you want. That's a little lounge. Next it's bookcases. So we need 16 bookcases. 
So along this wall here, which is the back of the garage, we're going to place one, two, three, four, five bookcases. We're going to place another five on top. Now we're going to place four here. So that's 14 and we're going to place two here. Now that's the most bookcases that you need. Any more that you want to place are entirely up to you. Whichever you do, I'd say put spruce trap doors at the ends here and here just so that it looks like they're fully enclosed bookcases and of course place your enchanting table right in the middle so that it has clear blocks right the way around and it's really important you don't put anything here unless you actually plan to. You can control what level of enchants you get if you place torches or carpet or something in here but if you want full level 30 enchants nothing between the bookcases and the enchanting table. Now I'm going to put another row of bookcases right the way along the back and along the side just because I like how it looks and of course another trapdoor on top and I'm going to put one more under the window and finally I'm going to place a lantern on top of this bookcase just to make sure that the room is fully lit. And of course you can always put a chest down if you want to keep books or lapis in. You can pop a painting in the lounge room if you want to. Now let's decorate the kitchen. Now come to this end of the wall, so furthest from your door. Two iron blocks, that's a fridge. Now stand with your back to it, move out a little bit and place an iron door, that's your fridge door. Now we're going to place two barrels next to it for kitchen cupboards. We're going to place two dark oak trapdoors on top of those. And you can either place birch trapdoors right the way along to complete the wall, or you could actually leave one or two of those open so that you do have a space for your cookbooks. Now we're going to come round to this back wall. In the back corner, place a crafting table. Above it, leave a gap of one and place two barrels. Place another barrel next to the crafting table. Now we're going to place in some ovens, a smoker and a blast furnace or furnace. Pick which one you want to be your stove top because you have the option of removing a floor tile and putting in a campfire. The smoke is going to be my stove top. There's the blast furnace. Above the one that has the campfire, put a polished andesite stair for a fan vent. Put a barrel next to that. Now you can either leave it like that or you can put a detector rail on top of your smoker. Just ensure that it runs sideways. Now back to your back wall. A cauldron for a sink. A barrel next to that. And we're going to put a white banner on in front of the cauldron for a tea towel. Now we've got plenty of storage in here. Let's make use of it. A brewing stand on top of one of your barrels. Now this is a combined kitchen dining room so of course we want a table and chairs. Come back two blocks from our wall to the foyer, so one, two. Place a dark oak stair, place another one upside down next to it, get rid of the first one. And just go round, we've got three, we're going to mitre the corners, and we're going to mitre the corners again, and then we're going to place two chairs next to each of those. There's our table. Now we need to have lamps, you can add an extra slab and hang a lamp from it, a lantern from it, or you can knock out a slab, put a hopper under it and shift click to place a lantern under that so it looks like you've actually got a light fitting. There we go. Now we're going to go around with our waste blocks again and pop some paintings in. I think we might go for a two painting here, yeah, that's not bad. That's our kitchen dining room done. Let's go upstairs. On this little landing we're going to place one lantern so we're going to find the middle one. So one, two, three, there we go. Also place one in the stairwell directly in front of the window. We're going to do the front room first. Place two lanterns hanging from the ceiling. Now we're going to make a little wardrobe. So couple of chests, maybe one more for good measure, and we're going to place two dark oak doors, 
so that the handles face inwards. I'm going to place dark oak trapdoors on top of those and two at the top of the wardrobe. Now place in a bed and we're going to make our loom chest of drawers again just like we did down in the foyer. And I think a nice painting might be the trick here. And you can put carpets on the floor, there's no restrictions with that. Main bedroom, I'm going to put bookcases in each corner just because I can. Lamps on each, you could equally use scaffolding if you can't afford bookcases because it's early game. Putting in a double bed and we're going to make another wardrobe. I'll make this one three chests high. I'm going to put in some shelving, trap doors for the sides of the wardrobe and for the top, trap doors for the front and again dark oak doors for the wardrobe doors. There's our wardrobe. Another loom chest of drawers and another couch. And let's hang some lights from the ceiling. There we go. And again, carpets won't be any problem putting carpets in here. Right, bathroom last. Let's put some lamps in. So I'm going to put one there and one there. Yes, it's overkill, but I like having two. Now the bathroom's pretty simple. We're going to start with a toilet. So in the corner, opposite the door, upside down polished diorite stair, heavy weighted pressure plate on top for a lid. Leave a gap of one and put a hopper and a trip wire hook for a tap and now this short wall next to the door we're going to place one, two and three polished diorite stairs. We're going to put a trip wire hook whoops, right at the top for a shower and another one for a bath tap. And for the sake of privacy, some curtains in the windows. Lastly, there's the garage. Now, you could build a little car to go in here, or you could use it as your main storage space. I'm going to use it for storage space. So I'm going to start by putting in double chests. I'm going to put an anvil in one corner, and then double chests again. And just to make it look a bit more garagey, Maybe some shelves along the back wall. And I'm going to hang a lantern by a chain, probably from this one. There we go. And that's the garage. And there is our finished, fully furnished suburban house. Feel free to put a backyard, make it however you like. Feel free to change the blocks and change the inside. I'd love to see what you do to make this your starter house.